All right, welcome everyone. Uh, this is an example of evaluation of mechanical properties from a given compression test data. So if we can see that uh, the data we have obtained after the compression test, uh, we have displacement. So this, this and, and then in millimeters, we have force in newtons, and we have also calculated the value of strain by using a video extensometer. So we have these values in millimeter by millimeter. Now the sample that was tested under compression, it was a cylindrical sample. Uh, the diameter of the sample was 4.85 and the height of the sample was 7.76 millimeter. Now the values uh, of the, like the mechanical properties that we will actually evaluate from this given set of data, it is uh, elastic modulus that we will calculate we will calculate the yield strength of the material, uh, the ultimate compressive strength, and percentage compression of the sample. Now we will start our calculations with the uh, uh, calculation of the area uh, that of the cylindrical sample. We know that the area of cylindrical uh, sample is pi by 4 d square. So we will apply this formula to calculate uh, the value of the area. So starting with the value of pi, 3.1411, pi by 4, so this is pi by 4 value. Into d squared. So the value of d, it is actually in millimeters. So first we will convert that into meters. So value of d and in here, it is d squared, so we will just simply apply this. Right. So it means that uh, this value is actually the area of the sample in square meters. There we go. And we just write it here. And insert one more column here. So this is the uh, area of the cylindrical sample that was actually tested for uh, the compression test. Now we will start our calculations. So first value of stress in Pascals. So we know that stress is force per unit area. Force is already in Newton. So we just select the force divided by this area. Now this area of cylindrical sample will stay constant. So we will just lock this value so we will apply a dollar sign before and after the cell number so we can see that it was g5 so it, now it is dollar g dollar 5 and just press enter double click and we can see that uh, this value is for the stress for the very first cell so we will just come at the end of the cell now when we see this plus sign we double click and it will be applied to all of the cells so we can see that just to confirm if we go to the second cell which is uh, d4 so we can see that the value of the force is changing from b3 you can see it was b3 now in the second cell it is b4 but the value of the area it is not changing all right so just to make sure that you have applied dollar signs before and after the cell number so now we have our values for the stresses and now but the next step is to draw a force versus displacement diagram for this data so we can see that on the y-axis we have value of forces and in newtons and in the x-axis we have values of displacement All right so if I zoom in on this, I will just change this to maybe one millimeter displacement and here I will just go up to maybe 20,000 force of I mean Newton. So we cannot, we can see that it is not a straight line starting from zero and I will explain this later why it happens during the compression test. But we can, uh, we can see that from 4,000 Newton to 10,000 Newton, we are sure that this is a straight line. Okay, so we can find these values uh, in our force column. 
starting from 4000 all right so this is the 4000 row so we can set this is a value for 4000 newton and now we'll find the value for 10000 newton so here we go so it is starting from cell number 74 to cell number 122 so we know that these are the values uh, these are actually the straight line of the stress versus strain diagram so now we can reset these numbers all right so next step is to draw a stress versus strain diagram so we will just select these two columns go to charts select this scatter with smooth lines and this will give us a stress versus strain off okay so now we can double click on the x uh, axis uh, we can change these numbers to two decimal points there we go as you can see here similarly double click on y axis go to numbers make it zero and one more thing we will actually display these units in millions because these values are in megapascals so we can just for a good visibility we can actually uh, select in megapascals and now we can add titles of the chart in y-axis it was a value of strain in millimeter by millimeter units and similarly uh, for we will add axis title for the y-axis and this was stress in metaphorical right so we add these units just for clarity okay now the first mechanical property that we will actually evaluate it is the <coughs> elastic modulus of the material and it is it can be calculated from the linear portion of the stress versus strain diagram all right so we need to draw a linear portion okay so in order to do that i will just copy this graph stress versus strain and i will just paste it somewhere else so that we actually use the corporate stress versus strain graph now I will edit the data so just double right click on this graph select data and edit these values so we know that the straight line was from cell number 74 to cell number 122 similarly for y-axis I will change the value from 74 to 122 change need to make a dot in here all right so there we go we have a straight line click this straight line go to chart design uh sorry yep and add chart element so i will add a trend line more trend light options uh linear trend line and i will display equation on the chart so you can see that this is a value for of, of the this is this equation of the straight line i will just increase font size and we can see that this is y is equal to uh, some value into x minus something so if you remember uh, the equation of straight line it is y is equal to mx plus c where m is the slope of the line and c is the y intercept and we are interested in the slope of the line because that will actually that actually corresponds to elastic modulus of the material so I will double click on this. I will go to number and it will actually display a number which corresponds to the elastic modulus of the material. So if you look at here, it is 74.87 into 10 raised to power 9. Okay, so I will just write 74.87 gigapascal because it is 10 raised to power 9. this is the value of the elastic modulus of the material that we have calculated from the uh, stress and versus strain diagram so i will just delete this because we have already recorded the number which is 74.87 gigapascal 
So I'll come back to my stress versus strain diagram. The second value that we have to calculate, it is the yield strength of the material. So here I will write 0.2% yield strength schools. And I will, I have to uh, apply a formula. Uh, so I will just show you is equal to <clears throat> this strain value minus 0.2%, which is, which makes it 0.002. I prefix multiply by this value of the elastic modulus and we have to lock this value because this is the constant value for this material multiply by 1 e9 because it was in bigger and press enter and now uh, we have this plus sign at the end of this cell and double click that and it will be applied on the all formula uh, all of the values for the strains now if i go to the second cell we can see that the value of the strain is changing uh, but the value for the elastic modulus is constant for this material now we have to add this series of real strength in the stress versus strain diagram so i will just go right click select data add another series 0.2 percent Yield strength x axis value, these are the strains. So I will just click select some cells and then I will press control shift lower key, it will be applied on all of the cells in the y axis. I will do the same, select these values for the yield strength, control shift lower key, and press up to here. Just make sure that. These are actually 3102. This is a problem with Excel. Sometimes it does not uh, take this out. So we can see that we just started from zero, double click on the y axis. So we can see that it has actually uh, added a, graph, a line for the yield strength, which is a straight line. And we can further to improve our visibility so just uh, start with zero and go up to 0.1 in strain and in the y-axis i will actually go from six into each per 10 to just two is here is per nine three nine and we can see that it has actually made a straight line which actually uh, uh, replicates the linear portion of the stress versus strain curve however we can see that uh, it didn't it moved to 0.2 percent but we can see that our straight line actually starts from some other value okay uh, this is a problem with the compression test uh, if we do not balance the force and the displacement if, when we start the compression test it actually uh, it adds some error in the data and but we can correct that data so we can see that from where this straight line actually in the stress versus strain diagram actually uh, starts. So we just go to view, zoom, maybe go up to 200% and we can see that uh, this straight line in the stress versus strain diagram, it actually starts from maybe 0 0.012. Okay, so look at the X coordinate. Okay, if you look at, if you move the uh, cursor on the stress versus strain diagram, we would be able to see the X and Y coordinates. And in the X axis, it is the value of 0 0.012. So we will just write it here somewhere. Go to 100% zoom, 0 0.012. Just to remember. Now we can change this value because this uh, a straight line for the yield strand, it must move to the accurate value. So we will add this number 0.012. Zero one two. In the first value where we calculated the value for the yield strength, press enter, and similarly select the first value. Go to the end of the cell, and you see the plus sign. Double click, and you see that now this uh, value, this line, which is corresponds to the yield strength of the sample, it actually moves to the right number, right value for the strain. And if I go, if I move my cursor to this point where it actually intercepts 
uh, and the y-axis which corresponds to the value of stresses it actually gave me a y coordinate value of 73785032 which corresponds to the yield strength of the material uh, to convert that into megapascal i can divide that into by million and i will obtain the value of 737.85 so 737.85 to give it a whole number i will just write 738 which corresponds to the yield strength of this material now to uh, calculate the ultimate compressor strength i will just uh, because this is the maximum stress that this sample will take so apply a maximum formula and go to the value of stresses uh, apply control shift lower key close the bracket in the dialog box press enter and here you can see this is the value for ultimate compressive strength in pascals to divide that into megapascals i will divide this with million and here it will go it is now in megapascals All right, so we have 5042 megapascal for the sample. Similarly, for percentage compression, uh, we will actually apply a formula for maximum for the strain values. Select the first value, uh, control shift lower key, it will take all the values, and then close the bracket, press enter. And here you can see this is the value for percentage compression. Uh, select this and multiply that with 100 because we will actually obtain our value in percentage instead of millimeter by millimeter so press enter and now we can add percentage here so in in this way you can see that uh, we have our elastic modulus value yield strength uh, ultimate compressive strength and percentage compression from a given set of uh, compression test data so uh, this is an example so you can follow the same example to calculate uh, for these mechanical values from the given compression test data that has been allocated to you uh, normally when we balance the force balance the displacement before starting the compression test we do not need to make adjustments uh, in the yield stand like we have done we have actually offset from 0.2 percent to we have to we had to add another value to move it to the right uh, side of the curve uh, if you balance the force we do not need to do that but if we have some error uh, if we do not balance the force balance the displacement that error will be actually added to the stress versus strain diagram but uh, we can also adjust as you have seen in this example all right thank you very much